and the omnibus. So I was forced into the arches when I was a child. And look, it's come back to bite me later on. I'm awash with the stuff. The Archers is the world's longest running radio show with more than 15,000 episodes broadcast. Despite being a rural flavour show, The Archers is recorded in the heart of the UK's second largest city, Birmingham. You're listening to Wednesday's episode of The Archers from BBC Radio 4. <laughs> Oh, could do us a fry-up if you fancy it. You know, nice bit of bacon, a few tomatoes. Take your mind off stuff? No. How about we go for a walk? You know, get some fresh air, talk things through? Round here? Have you lost your tiny mind? <laughs> I ain't going out that door, I'm telling you now. OK. Charged with perverting the course of justice and dangerous driving. I don't sound good. No, but I fessed up to everything, didn't I? Uh. And I'm pleading guilty. So, uh, my brief reckons the judge has to take all that into account. Well, sounds serious, though. Dead serious, yeah. As in, maybe going to jail? What do you think? Right. Oh, why did she have to grasp me up? I don't get it. Look, there's no point in going over it again, son. I wish your mum would talk to me first, but she only did what she thought was best. That's garbage, and you know it. George! <gasps> Get out of here oh, now! Oh, no, 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 who's that now? I don't know. Come on, you little... Come out and face me! <sighs> Sounds like Brian Aldrich. Look, door's locked, don't worry. Keep your voice oh, down. I know you're in there. How can he see us? George, there's no way he can see into the kitchen. He's guessing. Are you sure? Oh, think about it. Well, no, I reckon he's given up. Where you going? Want to check he's gone? No, no, you, you can't leave me. Uh, honestly... There's nothing to worry about. Are you thick or something? But okay, a few people might be cross, but they'll get over it in time. Any road, now you've been charged, we've got bigger things to worry about, son. Oh, afternoon, Tony. Neil, you okay, are you? You didn't get my text then? Huh? No, I think I left my phone at Barrow. Just popped in to check on Susan, you know. We found George's fleece in one of our sheds. Oh, right. Someone uh, needs to pick it up. Where the hell is he? Where's he hiding? Brian, I well, want he... to know where he is, and you're going to tell me right now. You, you're talking about George, I assume. Oh, damn right I am. Is he hiding at your place? Look, I realise you're angry. Oh, you do, you... do you? Well, then tell me where he is. Come on, Brian. Look, I'm angry too, but having a go at George isn't going to help anyone. It'll help me, because I need him to know he nearly destroyed my daughter's life. And my granddaughter. <laughs> Martha's my granddaughter too. I know exactly where you're coming from. Don't you try and soft soap me. Let's all calm down. Gene Harvey's watching from inside the shop. I don't care who's watching. Make no mistake. George will answer in court for what he's done. You know he's been charged. So the best thing is for you to go home and calm down before you make things worse. Me? I make things worse? Don't you... Dare try and make out that I'm... Oh, oh Brian. Don't you dare. Just, Are just you OK? Don't, Neil, hold uh, his other arm, yeah. can you? Yeah. Brian, what's happening? Is it his angina? Uh, yeah, probably. Oh. Brian, where's your spray, Brian? In my... Inside pocket. Yeah? OK. Let me... Uh... Oh, yeah, here it is. How many sprays, Brian? It's OK. I'll do it. There you go. OK, that's good. Let's get him to the bench. Yes, of course, of course. Come on, come on. That's it. You're all right. Oh. Ah. There. That's better. Oh, no, then. Probably no, then. best if you leave us to it, Neil. Oh, if you're sure. Uh, what were you saying about George's fleece? Uh, someone needs to take it away, because he's not working for us anymore. He's sacked. Oh, right. 
I don't think you need me to say why. No, I should think not. Not to put one foot on our farm. Oh, I'll pass that on. Uh, I hope that doesn't apply to the rest of the family. What? Well, there's Susan Emma. No, no, no. Not at all. Well, that's good to know. Right, bye then. Uh, I hope you feel better, Brian. Oh. Has he spray done the trick? Ah, uh, yes, yeah. Yeah, I'm feeling better by the minute. So, George has been charged, eh? <laughs> Can't see this ending well for him, can you? Hi there, George. Hmm. Brian's been round, banging on the door. Yeah, he accosted me outside the shop. Did he? He was that upset he had some kind of angina attack. No way. Is he OK? Well, he will be. But it was pretty worrying for me and for Tony. Do you mind if I sit down? Oh, yeah, of course. Mm. Thanks. Uh, but he's all right now. Uh, oh, the pain seemed to ease. Yeah, yeah. He's still angry, obviously. And Tony was. What did Tony say? Oh, it's no surprise, but they don't want you back. George. They definitely sat me. Very definitely. <sighs> Any road. It's nice to see you. Ain't it, George? No. George. Well, he's as bad as her, isn't he? And Nana. George! <sighs> yeah, you heard the police charged him this morning. <laughs> Dangerous driving and perverting the course of justice. Yes, Emma told me. Mm. That sounds pretty serious to me. Look, George. I don't mind you talking honestly if you don't mind me doing the same. Whatever. If we hadn't phoned the police last week, would you have handed yourself in? Well, he would have confessed in the end. And Alice might have drunk herself to death by then. I heard she's getting better. The thing about prison is you've got an awful lot of time to think. So that'll be something else for you to consider, because I've got to say it's not looking good. Oh, I've had enough of this. Sit down, Dad! All right, all right, keep your ear on. Whatever happens now, I can't help thinking that if you'd owned up yourself, they would have been more lenient on you. And if you hadn't blamed Alice, well... A few I'd... points on his licence. We said all this to him, Neil. The police were never going to listen to me. Well, I'm no lawyer, but what I've gleaned over my years is that it's all about intention. Well, George had good intentions when he helped her. Yeah, but I never should have bothered. You, you were trying to do the right thing, son. I messed up trying to get her home. I messed up stopping her opening the door. No, George, where you messed up was by blaming her. You think I don't know that? Ever since I clicked her seatbelt into place, George. I felt sick as a dog ever since. It's like a weight come inside me and, and keeps dragging me down. And I thought he'd go away because I helped them people, didn't I? I saved them from drowning. You certainly rescued them, yeah. No one's saying you didn't, but after Don't you that, think I'd I'm... change things if I could? So I don't need you lot grassing me up and making things worse. That sounds like you're blaming other people again. Yeah, it's all my fault, ain't it? Because I'm a pointless piece of... George! I wish Harrison had done what he wanted on Monday. It'd be easier all round with me out the way. Harrison? What do you mean? One minute I'm eating my breakfast in the garden and the next he's grabbed me. Are you saying Harrison attacked you? I bet you wish he'd finish me off, don't you? Cos I do. Better for everyone. George! Uh, leave him, Will. Leave, leave him. I can't believe Harrison would do that. Oh. I'm way out of my depth here, Neil. I, I've tried everything to get him feeling more positive, but... You know, it's so easy to get things out of proportion. I, I know that myself. Mm, I know. I know. I mean, they're serious charges, aren't they? I'm afraid so. The lad needs to be able to see a future for himself. Yeah. Well, he won't get through court, let alone what follows. Your Anguses are looking tremendous. Yeah, sturdy little beast, aren't they? Yeah, they're great to watch, especially the calves at this end. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they're very entertaining. Oh, <laughs> thanks for looking after me, Tony, and bringing me up here. It's just what I needed. Listen, I know how it feels to have your child go through the ringer. Oh. How I felt about him. I find it hard saying his name even now. 
fury. It felt overwhelming. Mm. But listen, it is not worth making yourself ill. Oof. Just the worry about Alice could do that on its own. You mustn't let it, Brian. You've got your whole family to support yeah, you. I know. But not the one person who would have shared it completely. Mm. Yeah, I miss my big sister, too. And the kids have been wonderful, but they've got their own lives. And Miranda's been very sweet, but ultimately, Alice is my responsibility. <laughs> Your responsibility? Oh, I'm not sure that's right, Brian. Alice is very much her own woman. Oh, I realise I'm a bit of a Neanderthal, but it's how I feel. Especially since she got divorced. Oh, well, <laughs> I wouldn't repeat that to Alice. And definitely not to Kate. <laughs> no, no, perhaps not. Actually, I, I won't say it to Miranda either. Turns out she's an extremely modern woman too. Right. Almost as bad as Pat. <laughs> oh, Brian! George, can I sit down? Can't stop you. Now I realise you don't want any more lectures. I've heard them all. Bad things happen, it's how you deal with it. <laughs> Actually, it's how you learn from it. That's the crucial thing. Tell that to Alice and Uncle Chris and the rest. Tell that to the judge and what about Harrison too? What do you mean? I've been thinking, Grandad. If the cops knew he'd come round you, would that help my case? You are joking, George. He'd probably lose his job. Now look, son, I don't condone what Harrison did. Not for one minute, but I reckon I can understand it. Can't you? Hasn't he lost enough already? And what about Fallon? George? Maybe. You've got to stop doing things that make the situation worse, do you hear? I can't help it, can I? Look what happened at Barrow. I was that lucky to get a job and then I blew my chances for nothing. I won't disagree with that. Well, it's the same now at Bridge Farm. Not quite, but... I know, going to court and it's all happening so fast. It's like it's out of control and it keeps happening because... Because let's face it, this is what I'm like. Yeah. Come on, shift over. That's right. No. You're going to have to build your life back up, inch by inch, step by step. Just like Freddie Partridge did. He told me how it was at Young Offenders. He were terrified the entire time. Freddie came out the other side, just like you will. I'm not strong enough. I know I'm not. Oh, yes, you are. I tell you what our family has got, George. It's resilience. <laughs> I wish I did, but I don't. That's it. Come on, you let it out there. I'm telling you now, George, you will come through this. I'll make sure of that. I'm your granddad, and I love you very much. And that will never change. So what do you do? I uh, oh, do the spot effects on the arches. I uh, just uh, yeah, any. Are you what we call foley then? Uh, kind of, yep. First. Okay, and and these are these are all part of the uh, paraphernalia of production. Uh, yep, that's uh, the ball bar. That's this one. Yep, that's. I mean, Haley so wanted to be in their own place when their baby came. It's uh, due in two months. Uh, not much chance of that now. No. I mean, it would have been a stretch for him financially, mind, but oh, I just wish there was something practical I could do to help him, Caroline. I, mean, I think the Archers has had this immense popularity over the years, um, basically because it has always very accurately reflected the reality of life and living in a rural community. At whatever